All right, we got record going. Um, and then of course, Tammy Cheatham, she's the one that is kind of our Canvas um, domain person and she's set up your accounts. Now, a little bit about where you are with Canvas. Um, because of a little bit of confusion, you are gonna get your own domain where your, your kids will come over and your grades will go back and forth, but it's probably gonna get set up second semester. And so I'm guessing you probably won't want to change over to your own domain until like in the summer type of a deal. Um, right now you're on the ESU 8 domain. That's why we had to create your accounts. You're getting there, but it was just a checkbox where um, they thought you already had your domain, um, but you were using ours before. So it's coming, you'll get that um, integration, but probably won't have the integration till your classes next year. So, and anything you build in these courses this year can go into your own domain. Um, we just pull them across later on. So that's, that's wonderful. If you guys have questions, chat them to me um, or um, go off mute and talk about it. So um, the candy activity, that is not happening. We forgot the candy. Um, so you guys could, weren't gonna get to do it anyway because you are remote, but even the other room, so you don't even have to feel bad. They forgot the candy. So I'm gonna kind of start with this since we're behind. We're gonna look at your profile, um, how to add a course, how to add your students, and then we're really gonna talk about in the pre-K, um, third grade, using a button-based homepage because it's really simplified and it's easier for kids. And I will tell you about, as I quickly go through these next pages because they're um, not mine, um, we're gonna get to the elementary part. Uh, we're almost there, lost my train of thought. Everything in here, I try to follow up with a video resource that basically talks about the same thing that I'm gonna show you. So if you can't remember, if you come back to the slideshow, you can probably find a, a supporting video, not mine, but of somebody doing just what I'm gonna talk about. So I know this will be fast and furious and you're like, Argh. Also know that any of us, any three of us, are happy to work one-on-one -on -one with someone. Um, if you just want a little bit more help, or you say, this is what I do, I don't know how to put that in Canvas, we will help you do that. Um, and Mindy, you might help me. Did any of your teachers use Seesaw before? Yes, okay. So I'm gonna show you how you can pull your Seesaw activities into Canvas also. So if you plan to use Canvas, everybody uses it K-12 as a home base for remote learning. Um, I'll show you how you can go out to, to Seesaw and actually do those activities and stuff in Seesaw and have them brought into Canvas. So if there's, that is something somebody wants, we have that option too. All right, so some of our learning goals, and if I need to slow down, you just have to holler or chat at me. Um, we're gonna make sure that login and, and creating a course, we're gonna look at some of the Canvas features. We're gonna clean up the sidebar bar for elementary kids so that's very simplified. And then um, we're gonna talk about making those home base um, buttons so that you can um, function at a very simplified home page, but with all the great activities that Canvas allows you to do. And I um, just did a Zoom presentation about not supposed to have a halo. I'm sitting right under the light and I got a halo. So um, log in and, and I've got a few pictures here. I'm gonna go actually go out to Canvas in just one second to show you this stuff. And same with the settings and notifications. Here are resources that go through everything I'm gonna show you. So if I go through it way too quickly, but please, if you have the ability to stop me um, by coming off mute or chatting, I'm happy to talk more about um, any of these things I'm going to show you. And then we'll get into the home bar, home page and sidebar, and all of those resources are also here. So I'm going to escape and I'm going to pull up my Canvas course. I had this all open and had to shut my computer down when we were having, trying to get logged on. So here we go. Um, so this is a little bit about, and I've got a lot of courses in here. You might not have any, or you might have one or two. And over here, you mostly have the same thing 
I have, except you probably don't have admin and you won't have groups until you build groups for of students. So that will show up later. But the first thing I would tell you to do is in the account one here, you probably have the letters of your initials unless you put a picture in. And under profile, I would, I would certainly say putting a picture here just by clicking the pencil, uploading a picture, or you can just take one is really important because if we go remote, those kids want to see you. They want to know they're connecting with their teacher. So this is a huge thing. Um, we talk about trying to continue that relationship um, building even after we've gone remote if we have to. And this is just one little way. And also um, when your picture is in there, just like over here, they're just going to know that they're in the right spot. Looks like I have a question. Let me check that. Okay, someone, oh, you haven't been able to log in, Mindy. Okay, so um, anyone else? Um, to log in, Tammy created, she should have sent you an email that said something about um, logging into that first course. Did you get that email? That, that It's kind of a dummy course. It's like teacher permissions course. If you got to this esu8.instructure.com, the login is your email, and the password is, let me pull up a Word document to type that in quickly. Um, so let's go bigger here. So the password is all the same the first time, and then you can change it, but it should be So try that can, whoops, can, yep, canvas pass, the A's are the at sign, the pass is just regular. That should be everybody's password the first time. Change your picture, I would put your picture in. I think, I just think that's important. Um, if you go here and you go to settings, um, you can also get to settings um, a couple other ways, but we wanna look at your settings because if, based on the way they put this in here, if your display name says like Molly Asha, I probably don't want that displaying to students. So this is where you would come and change your display name um, by over here. There's an edit button. I can't see there are too many things open. Um, so let me make this a little bit smaller. Are you, I'm guessing you're still seeing my screen. Um, settings. I can't see my screen. I hope you can. Um, there it is, oh, right down here. I had to move everything over. So it says edit settings. I click that, then I can come over here and change my display name. And so that's important too, because you probably wanna go by what your kids are calling you. And then I just update my settings. One thing about it, you have to save. It doesn't save automatically like Google and we're used to. Um, so the other thing over here under your account is notifications. Now I'm gonna talk about them. What you end up doing, you'll probably change a couple different times trying to figure out what works best for you. So if this has the check mark, they notify me right away when a due date is set. Um, or they can send me a daily summary, send a weekly summary, or don't send it to me at all. So if it's a course and you're in there all the time, you maybe don't want any of this sent to your email, otherwise you're gonna be bombarded with emails. Or maybe I just want at the end of the day, I want a summary of any um, activity, um, submission activity, something like that. So you kind of have to decide how you want that. Um, and then you just, move these and click these however you want them. So that's under the notifications. Maybe you want to be notified constantly. Maybe you're not in it all the time, whatever. It's, it's totally a pre personal preference. All right, so that was account. Picture's a big thing, your display name, and then the notifications um, when you wanna be notified. So over here, I'm gonna go to my dashboard again. You might have things there and you might not. If you do not have anything here, over here on the side, 
or just depends on how big your screen is displayed. Whatever is over here, if you don't see it, it also, or it will end up on the bottom of your page. It just automatically moves it down there. So if you have things really large here, then it moves it to the bottom. But you would need to start a new course. And um, once you've started a new course, that's when you can add students to it. When you get the integrated system, your students would already be there because it would come over from your student assistant or um, your SIS. But we don't have that, so we'll start a new course. And I'm going to call this um, Boyd County Elementary. And I just leave all this private. That's what you want. Your kids are going to be able to access it. And I create that course. All right, so here we are, and this is a completely empty course. Um, and you're like, well, this looks very adultish, and it does, but I'll show you some that, that don't look that way. And um, one thing I wanna show you though, over here I have all of these things over here. And for students in your grade levels, I would probably want it so the only thing they see is probably the home button because I'm gonna make it so everything that they need is on that home button. It might go out to other places, but all they need is the home button. So what you do to figure that out is I'm gonna come down here to settings. Now, <clears throat> we'll probably build in modules, we're gonna maybe build quizzes, all that stuff, you can still use it. And as a teacher, you're gonna see it, but the eyeball's gonna be like crossed out. That just means the students won't see it. And I don't know that, K3, you're gonna be doing grades through here and things, so maybe they'll see it, but I would guess at this point, not, so. She would just slow down and stop her. What was that, you need me to slow down? Did someone need something? I heard something, but I didn't catch it. Yeah, we need you to slow down for just a second so everybody can get logged in. We're still trying to get that done. Oh, okay, are you getting logged in? I'm not sure that I've made any adjustments for that, so. They're resetting passwords and some of them are getting in, so. Oh, okay, wonderful. I will wait, you tell me when to go. And know that this is recorded and I will scrub out the parts where I wait and stuff so you don't have to sit through all of that before I send it on to Mrs. Johnson to send out, but you'll be able to find that stuff. Thank you. Yep. Cindy, while we're waiting for those, I might just ask, so is kindergarten going to, to use it do you need to get those students in or are you just thinking first through third right now the plan is third through 12th um preschool kindergarten um first grade i know they were using seesaw quite a bit so i was just curious how we could implement okay. that in great um, and the reason i included second grade is primarily because barb johns teaches first and second and I didn't want her to have to learn two different platforms. So right now the decision for sure is third through 12th and we're just looking at how feasible it is for. Okay, so who is on the call? Is it just third grade teachers? Right now for you, it's preschool through fourth grade. Okay, okay, so they can see how it works. Very yes, perfect. and also I also thought some of us are parents too and it'll be interesting to see because I know you and schools in your district all said it would that was one of the frustrations for parents yes last spring is that um as good as all the different platforms were it was hard for parents to join on to all of them right or yeah. to you know yeah. all of them yep yep all right well you guys need to just let me know when you're ready for me to continue Quick question, Molly, is it best for them to log on to continue or is that something they can do after? You know, they might just want to stop and watch because it's recorded. They could go back and do their thing slowly as they're building their courses if they want. 
because I know they're anxious to log on, but if it doesn't affect the training. Yeah, no, I'm not going to, I mean, at the end, I was going to give them time to work and maybe we can work on getting logged on then. That would be good, I okay. think. All right, so I will Staff, go. Are you okay with that? I will continue, but I will go slower, maybe. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Okay, once again, I am in a course. I, I started that course, my Boyd County Elementary, and I am going to, uh, I just came down here to settings. So a few things in here, I can upload an image. Um, so on that dashboard page, go back to here, some of my courses have images and some of them just have colors. So you can decide um, if you want an image. I'm gonna go back into this course that I was at, the Boyd County one, and I came down to settings. So if I wanna put some sort of an image there, I can. Um, if you have course codes and stuff, those will line up with your student information system when you get that done. So I don't mess with any of this really, unless um, I'm guessing you're not probably preparing anything that's like just second semester only, that's more of a high school thing. So you can put those dates in there, but I wouldn't worry about any of this stuff in settings at the moment. But what I would come over here to is navigation. So what navigation does is that's all these buttons over here I was telling you about. And I would just literally drag these buttons that um, are up here below this line. And then that means the students won't see them. You can still use them. You can still do an announcement, all of those things. You're gonna do assignments. You're going to do discussions. We might be taking grades. We might be putting them in groups. I don't know if we will in third grade. Um, we'll still probably have files. Um, we're gonna build pages, but they just won't see it. They're just gonna have a home button is the only thing they're gonna see there. And it's gonna make their life so much easier. So I literally just drag all these below. You can, they can still use Google Drive if they did. I don't know if third graders did, but it's just the home button above there. And then I'm gonna save that. Remember, save, gotta still save in Canvas. Now all of these are like the eyes crossed out. That just means the student can't see them. Um, you still can, and I'll show you student view in a little bit. But so that's the wonderful thing. Now I am going to, um, since I was in settings, I'm gonna come back up here to um, show you a couple other examples. Um, the calendar, if you assign a date, it automatically goes to the calendar. The inbox, that's only email within Canvas, but you're probably not gonna use that with young kids um, anyway. The Commons is a place that you might go to find um, stuff that's already been created, and then you can use it. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But I'm gonna take you actually into another course to show you what a button-based homepage looks like for young kids. All right, so I have one I keep working in. I think it's this one. Yep, okay, so um, this is one that I created from a template, and I'll show you how to get those. And this one maybe is how I want to organize it. And each day I have their activities um, behind it. And so they would just come in and they would click this. This is set up so that if you were gonna go remote and do some Zoom, they would just have to come here and click on the icon. And then behind that icon, I have put my Zoom link and they can go to my Zoom. Um, maybe if there's the library button. I mean, this is just, I just took this as an example. Um, so if I would click on Monday, it's gonna take me to another page, okay? And so that's what a button-based, um, Uh, button-based home page does. So that's one example. Go back here, I have another one. So this one's a little bit for older kids, um, but it's all button-based. So this would be like the home page, and if I click on any of them, 
um, well, I'll click here to get started, it says. But then if I click on announcements, it takes me to another page where there's an announcement. If I go back, and I click on discussion ideas, it takes me to this page with full of more buttons, but each button takes me to an example. So basically that's what we're going to create, a button-based homepage. So now I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I want to, whoops, come here for just a second. So this here resource on creating the home page or a button based home page. One of the things I'm going to talk about is this the button factory and it's linked right here to get to it. It's pre made buttons. Um, and then this button for canvas slides shows you how to make different shaped buttons. The button factories. They're all kind of rectangular. Um, or you can make buttons in a PowerPoint. So there's different ways that you can do that. It's all linked right here so you can see how to do that. So I'm gonna go back here to my course for, um, oops, my dashboard, my Boyd County course. And I wanna say one more thing up here. These courses that are above are published. These that are unpublished sit below. So if there was a student coming in, they would not be able to see my Boyd County one yet because I haven't published it. So just so you know how it's organized on their end too, if they're not seeing your course as a student, there's a good possibility you haven't pushed the publish button. There's different places you can do that, but. All right, so here I am and I am going to go um, to a page and here is my page and because I'm sharing everything I got to close some things out so I can see my whole page okay so I want to create a new page and I'm going to turn this into my home page eventually a couple different things I can do um, in here I'm going to call this um, Boyd County third grade so I'm going to pretend I'm the third grade teacher and so that's what my page is going to be called and um, then this little thing here is called the rich text editor. And every time that you or a student goes to type in here, whether it's an assignment, an announcement, discussion, anything, you get these same set of tools. A couple things about it. This is pretty normal. We've got our different types of text, centering, all that. Um, you can do math. On it they've got some nice um, ways to do that but there's a couple that are really really nice and that is this one right here this record and upload media so every place that you want kids to um, answer you or submit something they have this option and I'm going to show you what it's like um, the first time you might have to allow your microphone or your webcam but basically they can give you their answer in either just an auditory answer or a recording or a webcam recording. And for these young kids, you can do that for all of the assignments that you give. So if I type out some directions, I can then also do a recording of those directions. Wonderful, wonderful feature. And I'll use it here in a little bit. But um, okay, so this is gonna be third grade and I could go out and get some really cool stuff, but I'm just gonna create in here for the most part. I'm going to make 24 fold, um, it's gonna say welcome to Miss Ashoff's, oops. Third grade class. Um, so I can, um, do my font and see, you gotta remember where font is, color, text color, there, no, well, that's not very exciting, how come I can't find, there we go, um, Huh. 
really there is fonts in here and I don't know for the life of me why I can't find the cool fonts or even where they're at. I can change my font. I can make it larger, smaller, um, center it, all those kind of things, just like you would any other font. And I could change the color. We'll definitely do that. Make it cool. All right. So there's my welcome. I could do bring in pictures. If I want to import an image right here, like I would in Google or anything else, I can have that image on my um, uh, desktop or I can get a URL for it if I'm getting it off the web. Someone's got a chat here really quick. Okay, everybody's good to go. Um, but I'm just gonna go to the button part because that's what's important. So the easiest way to make sure your buttons are spaced equally is to do a table. So I am going to do three rows by two. And now I'm gonna put a button in here that is going to say, um, I could do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday again, but I'm just gonna do maybe a social a science button. So back over here, I had that cool place called the button factory. And I'm gonna go there. And I'm gonna build a button. All right, so this is what, whoops, I don't need a guide. I come over here and I put in here, this is gonna say science, all caps. And I can change my font, Roboto, and I can make it bigger. See, it's, it's building it right here. Maybe I wanted, oh, caviar sounds good. Oh, that's kind of a cool button. And it's bold. So there it is. My button size, um, I can kind of do shading, all that kind of stuff, the background. I'm gonna leave science green, I decided. Um, sure, I want a bubble effect on it and a border. And I want that border white, because I don't know why, but I do. That didn't really show up. So maybe I better keep it black, shadow it. Make the border a little bit bigger. There we go. That looks really good. Okay, so there's my button. And now I'm just, I'm gonna, I can download it. I can embed it. I can do however I wanna do in that. It's a PNG. So let's chart with the link to it. So I just copied my link here. I'm gonna come back over here. And I am going to do a image from a URL. That was where I got that link. And I'm going to put that in there. So they have this saying, or this one lady says, um, oh, can't even think of a cool saying. It's about that, you saw it turned yellow. That means it's, it's linked in there, it's there. Um, so I want to center this. I should have centered all of them before. So there's science. Okay, now, we're gonna quick change this to say math. Okay, and it's basically the same button, but it says math. Once again, I get that URL, come back over here. We're going to center this before I paste it in this time. Oh, I did that wrong. I gotta come up here and do the embed the image URL there. There's math, yep, okay. So I can do science, I can do math, I can do whatever I want. Now, the button's built, but I have to link it to something for the kids. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna highlight my button, and I am going to link it to probably another page, and that's gonna be my science page. Um, I don't have one built, so I'm gonna link it to a new page. I'm gonna call it science, and then I'm gonna put um, science assignments and so forth behind it. We'll do that same with math quick. The new page, and I'm gonna call it math. All right, so done with that. So they've both been linked. All right, so I'm gonna save this. I can save and publish now, or let me show you here. It's not published. 
all I would have to do is click publish. If it's green, kids can see it. If it's unpublished, they can't. Um, and the nice thing is you could publish this page, but then I could unpublish the science page if I'm still building that. Or within the science page, I can unpublish the module because I've only got one ready for kids and only want them to see one and then unpublish the rest until I'm ready for it. So that's the really cool thing about that. So here's my page and I don't need to edit it, but I'm going to say use it as the front page because I have other pages. If we come back over here to view all the pages, oops, coming. Um, there's my view all pages, I lost it, but anyway. So I want to come over, there it is. Oh, oh, I don't have them published. That's why we don't see the other ones, Never mind. But anyway, I want this, use this as my front page. So I've marked that, but there's two steps to actually make it the home button. Then I have to come over here to home and choose a home page. And I choose this front page here that says Boyd County, third grade. And then I save that. So then my home page is always going to be this Ms. Ashoff's home page. Now, what does this look like for a student? Well, right now, remember we see all of this as a teacher. Um, but if I look at student view at any time, I can do that. See, they only have the home. And let's say they went into science. There's nothing on that page. But if they would go in there, science page doesn't exist because I didn't publish it. Um, and they got lost, they would just have to click home and they would always come back to this page. So simplified is what we want. So let's get out of student view and go back to our course. Um, you can't see my, I gotta move this up. There we go, leave student view. All right, so let's build that science page that we were talking about um, when this goes to that new page called science. So, okay, there's that page called science that we had started um, and I can do different things in it. And once I get there, I might um, list different assignments do whatever I, I want behind it. But this is a page, so I'm just gonna put this is, oops, I don't know all capitals. This is where you find your science work. Wow, okay. So I'm gonna save that. And we're gonna publish it so it, we can see it. Now, if I come up to view all pages, we now have the Boyd County and the science page. So let's on that science page, show how we can do different things on it. So let's go back here. And it looks like this, but I want to start adding some things to that page. So I can add an assignment or what you probably wanna do is build everything in modules. And I'm gonna show you why. It's just simplest to build it in a module. And if we come back out here and I show you my modules part of the presentation, um, if you're not sure if you should use an assignment, a discussion, whatever, you can come here and go through this flow chart. So this is just a quick thing. Maybe you want a quiz, but I wanna show you what modules look like. So you see how this module here is, is organized. That's what a module does for you. It allows you to provide some organization. And the kids might not see that, but me as a teacher, I like the organization that a module provides. And here's an example of a module that's just put out there. And here is one that has text headers and is organized. And so depending on what kind of teacher, teacher you are, I'm very linear, I really like this. And if I was a student seeing it, I would like it. The way we're setting this up, the student's not gonna see the modules, um, 
and I don't re I don't know if your elementary has um, uh, iPads. Is that a thumbs up, Mindy? What it? Some of different. Okay, so this is just an idea showing how it looks on an iPad. So it does also flow that organization on an iPad. All right, so we're going to go back to course. We're in a module, and I am going to build a new one. More no than yes. Mm. Okay, so what do they use? Chromebooks. Okay, perfect. Thank you. It's web based, that's all right. So um, it works just like it's working on my computer on a Chromebook, it's web based. Um, there is an app for an iPad, so it looks a tad bit different um, if you're using the app. Um, but for the most part, the same. All right, so this is my module, and I'm going to call it science. I'm going to add the module. And then once I'm in science, I can do different things. Um, and I might have my other module um, was, uh, what did we put, math. Yeah. So I've got two modules there. And let's start building in this module. So here I am, and I come over here to the plus sign. I'm gonna add something, put something in my module. We have all of these things that we can do, but we're gonna start with that text header. And this one's all on oops, plants. And it's my text header, so I'm not gonna indent it. So I'm gonna add it, all right? And then, I want to add another one, and this is going to be, um, we're going to do a discussion. Um, oh, sorry. No, I want to do this discussion here, and the new topic is um, plant food. Oops. Plant food. All right, we're going to add that item. Um, Oops, I forgot I wanted to indent it so it looks better. Well, look right over here. I can do an indent really quick. So I'm starting to get some organization. And I'm gonna do one more thing under here. Let's do a, um, an assignment. And I'm gonna call it, I don't know, um, identify, oops. Plant identification, there you go. And I want to indent. So here's the way my module's looking. It's looking pretty good. And let's go back and since this plant food was just a name, we need to build what this discussion is gonna look like. So I'm gonna edit it. Here's that rich context editor. Um, so I can do the same thing. I could put a picture in here um, of different foods and they need to um, tell me, or maybe they need to um, discuss which of them would be plant food. So I could put water, I could put fertilizer, a picture, I could put a picture of, um, um, I don't know, candy. So they're not gonna probably pick that one, but how I would do that. So I'm just gonna put a picture in so you have experience doing that. From a URL, from Canvas, from Flickr. Um, I can upload it from my own computer. Um, and let's, let's go find one first. All right, so water. And I'm gonna do an image. And, um, oh, I don't know why I'm in Yahoo. I need to be in Google so I can, here we go. Images, and then I would go here to my tools and usage rights, and I would want one for used for reuse. And maybe it's looking kind of maybe I should have typed rain, but I'll just use this one. So a couple things I can do: I can copy it by just doing a copy image. I could also get the image link, copy the link address, um, whichever works. Oops, I missed that. That's not what I wanted. Copy image. 
I can take it back over here and I can just paste my image in. Yeah, it's not pasting. Or go back here and catch that link. So there's my link. Copy that and come back, stick that in there, update. Eh, that's not, that didn't work either. Sorry. Let's do it this way. Let's take this image, I'm just going to put it on my desktop, and then I'm going to come here and I am going to go to images and upload the image from my desktop right there. And it's a uh, decorative image that looks good. There it is. So a um, little bit more step than I guess it won't just let me copy and paste. I thought I could. And then let's do one more quick, let's get candy. Because candy is not food for plants. I'm still in labeled for reuse. So I'm going to put that right there, my desktop. Come back, upload, choose my file, some candy. All right, so I've got two pictures and then I'm going to write my directions that would say um, in the discussion box, tell which pictures are food for plants and why. Okay, now I talked about um, you can also add that um, audio or visual of the directions. So right here, I am going to do this and say, I want to do the mic only, um, or just actually, I'm gonna start a recording here. Your directions are to look at the pictures and then in the discussion box, tell which pictures are pictures of food for plants and why they are good plant food. All right, so there it is, I can save it. And so right there are the directions. So on the students part, they can click that button and listen to the directions. Um, if there's anything else I wanna add, I can do that. So here's a couple options. Allow threaded replies, kids can talk about um, other kids' responses. And hmm, I probably wouldn't check this for young kids that they have to post before seeing other people's answers. I would just save it and publish it. All right, so th this is what it looks like. And this is where they would put their reply. And we can look at that as students in, in a little bit. And I published it. So I'm going to go back to my module. And that one's green, it's published, it's ready to go. Um, I wanna show you this plan identification. It could be an assignment, you just build it the same way. But let's say I want to add a quiz because I wanna show you these quizzes. So we're gonna look at the quizzes. Um, there's two kinds. Always choose new quizzes because as of the end of August, I think classic quizzes goes away. They used to give you the option, but we're just gonna choose always a new quiz for this course. Um, I'm going to call it um, plant parts. Ooh, amazing. There we go. And tell me how many points. Maybe it's going to be, I think there's only five questions. So I'm going to say five points. Um, oops. I'm going to call it a quiz. There we go. Points, um, it's for everybody, all that kind of stuff. So we can save and publish. 
and then it's going to allow us to build our quiz. So you can add your everything you build, you can add to your item bank. And so your item bank grows. Um, but what those look like is you can do um, categorization questions. You can do a file upload. There's formulas for math. There's matching. We know what multiple choice ordering is, but I want to talk about this hot spot because I think for younger kids, this is a great um, type of quiz question. Hot spot. So I'm going to say, um, uh, actually, this is just plant, plant parts. And then a question stem, I would put, um, actually, let's do click on the plant part that, um, gives plants nutrients, all right? And that could add more, um, think about photosynthesis, if that's a word they use in third grade. But I want to, um, actually I think I put, I drug this to my trash, so I gotta drag my picture out of my trash first. I had one on here from, the other day, if I can find it fast. No, I can't find it fast. Sorry. We'll go here and go plant parts. All right. And I'm going to, we'll just take this one. Okay. And well, Ah, this one, this will be better. Okay, so I'm going to drag this one again to my desktop. And then I am going to drag it. I could have just drug it here, but I couldn't see all that with my stuff on. Okay, so there it is. And um, then I need to put the hot spot. So the part that they get nutrients from, it could be many parts, the leaves, they get so I, that probably wasn't a very good question. I would have to be more specific, but I'm gonna drag my hotspot over that part. So I'm going to, that's where I want my answer to be. Now I would also item, I would bank this item. Um, okay. Oh, add the item. It's just one point. Yep, never mind. it's done. And I'm done. Oh, I do have to have a stem. Um, so what part does it drink from? Now we're done. Okay, so there it is. And it allows me to preview it. So you're gonna see what the kids see. So what part does it drink from plant parts? I, as a kid, just have to click. So I'm gonna click here. It's my hot button. It's within my square and I submit it. And it tells me I got one right. That that is the part, the correct answer there. So great way for young kids to do a quiz. All right, so I'm done with the quiz. And I want to go back my course. Oh. Um, there we go. All right, so one thing I'm going to show you, science was clicked to this page, but let's add this page and link it to my module of science. Okay, so that's nice. Actually, I should probably have that underneath there. There we go. Now we'll link it to science. All right, so let's say you want to link it out to something you already have. So you can, um, we'll do the math one here since we don't have it linked to anything. So I'm going to come back to my home page. And that math button 
Oops, I got to get rid of you guys so I can see over here. I can link it out to a specific spot. All right, I think I already linked the math button to the page called math. Um, I didn't create that page, huh? So let's do a new page. I thought I did this math. Inserted the link. Oh, if you see the blink, you've created the link. That's what that lady already said. You saw that blink yellow, so you know you've created a link. But we need to um, add to that page or um, to that spot so we know where we're headed. And maybe it's out to your reading curriculum or something. So I'm going to come back over here to, to oops, save this. Save. Okay, I'm going to view all my pages, and I should have a math page. I don't know. Must not be doing something right. So we'll go math here. We'll create it. And then I can put this link. So um, let's say um, my math curriculum is called ESU 8, and that's where I take them. So, And I am just going to create that link to our website, if you're going to a website. Um, so if it's a website like this, I would just copy that link, cancel that, and then come here, do a hyperlink, do this link, put it in, insert the link. I saw the blink, so it's linked. So then they would go to that web page. So maybe you use IXL or something like that that they go do them there. So that's one way. But maybe I have a whole, f um, I'm not sure how your reading stuff works, but um, I can go and I've got maybe, is there PDFs that they use? Um, like Wonders, there's a, um, do you use Wonders, the um, slide shows? Or we don't have the same slides as the ESU has been working with in 2017, but there are slides yeah. and PDF snapshots available. Okay, so what else might you link to? What else curriculum? You'd link to slides, link to a PDF. Stories. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how are the stories? Are they on YouTube? Are they printed? Don't know that. I don't know. Oh, I'm going to ask if, so let's say there's um, an anthology that's available online and the story they need is, let's say, page 86 through 89. Is there a way to link to just specifically those pages of the PDF? Okay, so this is, this is my workaround of that. I don't know if it's the correct one or not, so we'll, we'll, we'll do my way. So I'm gonna pull it up. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Oh, my oh. Okay, so um, there's a HAL newsletter. I'm just gonna pull that up and pretend that's the PDF that I want in. And there's seven pages and I only want pages two and three. Um, so this is, this is how I would do it. It's probably not the right way. Um, I can edit that PDF and just save pages two or three. Or when I go to print, I say um, print pages two and three but I don't actually print, I make them another PDF. And that's probably not the right way. And I'm not even seeing that it's gonna allow me to- Go back up and pick a different printer. Uh, print to PDF, it's usually in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not there. Oh, maybe it's in advanced. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We do have that process. We have that available here. Right. And you, and you just print, but instead of printing, I don't print. I make the PDF and I don't, don't know why it's not showing me that. So, um, let's say, what if I went to print? Do I get the option next? Nope. Oh. Um, or I would just save this as pages one and two. There we go. Here we go. This is maybe what I need to do. Pages one and two. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's not showing it. I don't know why. Mindy's saying yes. But I, see, I know I've seen that there. I, know. I don't know why. 
anyway, so I would only print and then I would save it to the PDF instead of printing it. And then so I've got my PDF of two pages. But in this case, we'll just use all seven since I can't seem to make it down to two. So I have this PDF here and um, I'm, I think it's saved on my desktop. Let me see. If not, I'm going to save it there. Uh, it wasn't, so now it's on my desktop. So I know where it's at. Okay. So, and I want to link that in. So I'm back now. I'm going to go to my Canvas course. I got to shrink you guys so I can see it all. And I'm going to upload that PDF into my files. So I go to files and I'm going to upload a new file. And I'm going to choose that PDF from right there it is. And it's all seven pages because, but you would say whatever you'd want. Um, and uh, yep, it talks about the HAL newsletter and it's going into my course files. I could maybe just do reading files or name it whatever I want, but okay. So then if I go here and I want to put in that newsletter, I just come over here and I clicked on it and there it is, the PDF of it. I could also, depending on, I'm on a page here. If I was in an assignment, I'm gonna save this. So it's gonna be there and we'll show you what that is like for kids in just a second. But let's go, I was talking about modules. We're building in modules and this is that assignment that I never did. So I'm gonna edit that. And here's my plan identification. Maybe I give my directions um, here. I can upload that file right in there. So I go over here to files. There's my newsletter. I can put that file in an assignment also. Um, in a discussion, I can, it asks me to upload a file also. So it's the same place. So once I get it over into my files, those PDFs I can use. Now, one of them, we were talking about um, a, uh, something in Google. So that's nice because we have Google capabilities. Um, and I can, let's save this, get out of this. Um, so there's that HAL newsletter right there. There's a PDF, the kids would see it. Um, but let's say I want to do something else. Let's go back over to, not rubrics, modules. Um, and let's add a new one. And I don't know, I'm just gonna call it this. Um, cancel. I, I don't want a new module, I want a new assignment. There we go. Um, or maybe it's a, a discussion and it's new. I call it um, reading. I indent it, I add it. And then when I go into it to edit it, a discussion's a little bit different. So um, I write my stuff there, but um, here I can choose a file to add to it. So it's still the same thing. Um, and I'm getting a file. Let's say um, I pull it something from here. I could add it there. Um, if I was wanting, ooh, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to pull like a, um, if I have a PowerPoint on here, I could pull. I don't know if I have any. I cleaned up my desktop and I don't have anything on there. Um, I could, here's a, an agenda for a meeting or maybe it's a screenshot. There's that newsletter. I could upload it that way also. If it was um, like the slides from this how presentation, this, and I grabbed that URL there. I come back over here and I could say um, slides and I could embed it there with just the link like this. 
and that would be the slides. They would click on it and it's going to take them out to this slideshow. Um, I could also, if you have something, um, you talk over your slides, like you give them directions and you record that and it, maybe it's in YouTube, I can pull in a YouTube video, just really simple like that. Um, let's do, just do, um, I don't know, a story. Um, I'm gonna say reading rainbow. So here's a three hat day. I don't know what that story is, but I've embedded it right there. And when it comes from YouTube, it looks like this, and they would just click on it and it would share that story. So let's say, yeah, that's what I want. Let's save that. Okay, and so there's that discussion. And I wanted to make sure that was under modules. Um, Oh, it was, it was reading, right? So now if I come back here and show the student view, this time I think we're un working under, nope. Okay. Come on. So, Let's edit that home page and make sure that this whole thing is published. That's not what I want. Reading, it's all published. Now everything should be published. I should be able to see it. Oh, math's not published. I didn't put it in math, I put it in reading. I have a memory issue. <laughs> Student view, it's still under science. My science work goes out to my module. Oh, I thought I fixed my link. I was fixing it and then I went to fix Mindy's and I must not have fixed that. So let's go here if we go to modules. Science is linked to the science page. Math, let's just do this. Science, let's link it to that science module. Okay, and math will link to the math one. And I'll save. Okay, I don't know why you're not, I, something's not linked right, I apologize. I will get that fixed, but questions while I'm figuring out why I can't get to my modules. No questions, anyone? All right. Let's look here one second at my slideshow. And we talked about modules and resources, oh, content and activities. I wanna to talk to you just a second. So um, back to that course I showed you with all the buttons, like the discussion buttons and there was announcement buttons and there was quiz buttons. It's an open course that you can register and go to, and then you can use some of those same activities. But if nothing else, it shows you different activities, and that's really nice. Um, so that's what this is. You would click on here and you'd en enroll with this code, and then you could see those. But here I want to show you, um, if, you go, if you wanted to do something in Seesaw, but get to it through Canvas, 
um, if you click right here, I think a new assignment because I want to put the grade right here in Canvas and I'm going to call this Seesaw. All right, just a quick thumbs up. Can you hear that? Okay, so she's going to show you how to get a Seesaw activity. Um, and I think third graders could do this. I think you could show kindergarten for second graders how to do this, but this is um, how to do that. Or that's if they submitted an assignment. I would just make a button that says Seesaw, and then they would actually go into Seesaw and do their stuff in Seesaw, especially if they're used to doing that. So they would start with Canvas, click the Seesaw button, and basically they're gonna be working in Seesaw. But activity, she does show you how they could actually take their Seesaw activity and basically put the URL into their Canvas assignment and then it would be there. Now, if you were grading and the grades went on into your student information system, then you would probably wanna do this process, but that's not happening yet. So I would think that you're okay without doing this. But this lady here, um, oops, ah, how did I lose all my, hang on. I act like it's my first rodeo here using Zoom. I just closed out my windows. Let me get back to my... All right, then I gotta come down here. This lady that has this YouTube channel, um, it's gotta reload, uh, Canvas for Littles is what she calls it. But um, she has some fantastic videos and so one thing that I suggest doing is subscribing to her page. And I have that here for you. Too far, too far, too far. Okay. So back up here where we were talking about um, organizing modules and modules in Canvas for elementary. Those are both um, YouTube videos, but she has a channel right here. Um, nope, still not in the right spot. Here it is. Canvas um, for elementary teachers, and then this is a, a course. Sorry, it's not my Canvas for Littles. If we come back to that video, finally. the new assignment because I want to put I'm not going to make you watch the it. grade right here in Canvas, and I'm going to call it. But I would come down here and subscribe to this lady, this Lolly, because she, as you can see over here, she's got a ton of them. They're short, and it talks about specific things. It talks about making buttons. She's the one where I learned about the button factory. Um, she talks about um, making assignments for little kids and how to use that. She's the one that's doing this connecting seesaw. She is a great resource. So I would, right here, I would subscribe. I think I'm on the, I was on ESU8 YouTube channel left last, but I'll subscribe anyway. Um, and follow her and she's got some great resources down here. There is another one. Get back to my PowerPoint. Um, another resource, there's Canvas for Littles. Canvas for Elementary, it's a Facebook group that you can join. Um, it does a, she does a great job. And then um, before I show you the commons and let you get to, to work, this Shara Johnson is at ESU um, 2 in Fremont. She actually works for Canvas and for ESU2, and so she also teaches a Canvas course for um, their um, Career Academy. So she has a lot of great ideas and experience, and so she is another great person to follow. Now, if you're in Canvas, and you come here to the Commons, this is where other people have done things and they've shared them for the world to use. Um, I could search just like um, uh, home pages. And then I'm going to get examples of different home pages. Oh, here's a, a K through fifth. 
this looks fun and colorful. If I went to this, there, I'm getting there. And I look at it and I think, well, that's really nice. Oh, she's got a seesaw button. Clever, we're not gonna use that. And a zoom button, that's almost, I would just have to like take this clever out. And then I think this would be a great homepage for me to have. So um, I can look at the, the details if I want, or I can just come over here and import it. And what class am I gonna import it to? I'm gonna import it to the Boyd County one, because I think it's prettier than the page I made. So I import it. Um, and then I'm gonna go show you where that's at. But before I do that, I'm gonna come back to comments here. Another one, instead of just um, searching that, I could search that Lolly gal. And Susie Lolly is her name. And so she's got um, different, lots of different stuff up here that I could use. She's got a whole course on teaching K through second grades, Canvas for Littles, um, that I might want to look at. Or I could search. Shara Johnson right here and look at all the things she's put up for templates and things that I could reuse. So anything in the comments you can download and reuse. So I did, I downloaded that. So if I come back over here to my course, go to that Boyd County one. If you remember, it was a page. So if I view all the pages, there, it was TK, I don't know what that stood for. But there it is, oh, transitional kindergarten. And say, okay, well, I'm gonna edit that and I'm gonna have it say, welcome to, oh, she brought this full in as a picture. Um, so I can't take transitional kindergarten off because um, she made that as an image and brought it in. And, um, but I could change that image and I've still got buttons here. They're not live, but I could make this a seesaw button link out to my seesaw page or put the link in. Same with Zoom. So I create it all and then I save it. But let's say I wanted to redo this picture in our slideshow, Anna has how to do that. So if you come back up here, she has that right, right here. She made this Boyd County one and she will show you if you click on these links, how to make this um, and save it and put it in um, to your course. I could also create something like in a PowerPoint slide, take a picture of that slide and import it into my course. So you have so many options on how to make it pretty, um, but then you need to make it useful also. That has been a, a lot, a lot of information. I'll leave you once again with this page. I will tell you that CanvasCon is the, like the national Canvas conference. I don't remember where it was supposed to be, maybe Pittsburgh, but it has gone virtual and it's free. So you can register here to go, and then on October 15th, you can attend any of those Canvas sessions that you would like. So I'm going to stop sharing. I've been sharing, I've been talking. And then do you have questions? I will clean up that recording and send that to Cindy. Mindy, did you have a question? Two things. Number one, I got into my account. Oh, did Tammy? Number two. Did Tammy help you or something? Um, all of a sudden, while you were talking, I got an email that said I could. It must have been something I did. I don't know if it was. Something you did, Molly. Thank that you. Was magic. <laughs> um, so secondly, is the main idea that we would eventually have a link on our homepage that kids would be able to get on our homepage and then click and go to their Canvas account or their and log into their Canvas account and have all their things. Is that the big idea here? I mean, I mean, I think it sure could like your homepage of your website. 
Like, yeah, like the school website. Mm -hmm. I would think so. And that homepage just takes them to a login and then they would log in. Yeah. And you could do that now um, if you wanted. Um, I don't know whoever's in charge of your homepage. Just make a Canvas link on it that takes you to the login page. And then from there, kids would log in. Um, so young kids, if they don't know their login, um, and, and I assume that they were assigned an email. I don't know how low you use emails. Uh, great. Typically, just because there's some right. regulations there, but I've been told if we use avoidcounty.org, we might be able to go lower. So what I would do is, they. I mean, obviously, we put in that the um, email was created for them, and um, that's what their login is. And so once they get logged in, um, you can you know, they, you can turn off the email capabilities. They just use it as a login is what I'm trying to say. So in Google, you can do that. You've, they've been assigned an email that they'll use forever, but you turn off the email capabilities and it's just used as a login for them. And that's how they would have to log in. Um, it was created that way. You could also, if for younger kids, you could take that login, get them logged in and then make like a QR code from that once they're logged in and then they would just scan their QR code if they're using an iPad. But if they're using a Chromebook, they're gonna to have to log in. That email will be their login and they create a new password. The only thing is that email is turned off for email and Robert would do that on the back side of um, the Google domain. So for these grades, they would turn off email capabilities but it's still there to use for login. So that's what I would suggest for those. But Someone just chatted that maybe it's already on your homepage. Um, the Canvas link is on the top bar of our website, they said. So, um, and yes, there was a link to the slides. I will put that into the chat box for you. And once again, you'll have a recording. I'm gonna stop that so it can process. Um,